911, what's the nature of your emergency? Welcome back to the Tactical Living Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Walton. In today's episode, we're going to talk about unilateral decision making in relationships, how this might apply to you. And in particular, if you and your spouse are faced with a major life changing decision that you need to make, how incorporating some of the strategies that Clint and I are faced with really having to use right now might apply to you and be able to help you the next time that you have to make a big one for yourself. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy today's content. It has been many years since Clint and I here living in California have thrown across the idea of moving to Texas and the idea of moving to Texas had changed to maybe moving to Florida, maybe even Tennessee. And so it's one of those ideas that just randomly comes out of one of our mouths and we just kind of throw it back and forth throughout life. But it has never been to the point that it is now to where we're seriously considering whether or not we're going to be moving. And there are a lot of attributing factors to this. And if you live in California, you're probably on the same wavelength as Clint and I when it comes to whether or not we should get out, when we should get out, what the factors are. And it's gotten to this point now to where we're really starting to break things down and use a lot of different strategies and decision-making skills and making sure that we're making the best possible decision for the long run. And it's very, very important having a decision like this, massive decisions in any of our lives, whether it is to move or if it's to change a career or to start a family. Let's say there are many big decisions in our lives that we have to really sit down and give ourselves some time to be able to think on. And having strategies in place to be able to do that, I think, makes the process a little bit easier. It doesn't make it as daunting. It doesn't give you that sense of stress in your shoulders as you're caring about your day, maybe subconsciously thinking about it. And so for us, There are some big major factors, and I'm going to share these in intimate detail because I know that a lot of them might apply for you if you're in the same situation as us. And for me, my business is remote. I'm very fortunate to be an entrepreneur. Literally, I just take my laptop anywhere that I go, and that's where I'm able to work. I'm very lucky to have created what I have created to be able to do that, but I know that it isn't realistic in the sense that most people can't do that. And Clint is one of those people as a police officer. He got into his department at a time where he was very lucky because a lot of the things had changed since he became an officer. The recession had taken place very shortly after he started with his department. And in his agreement with his retirement, he gets to retire when he's 50. So staying at his department, that's really one of the the biggest components because whether or not you're going to be working an extra five or 10 years makes a massive difference when it comes to deciding whether or not you're going to be moving to a different department. You know, whether you work as a police officer or you work in any other career, your retirement benefits are a massive component and almost a sticking point for many people, depending on how good or how poor those benefits are. So for him, as it sits right now, he does get to retire when he's 50. Clint and I were very fortunate to be able to add 1,500 square feet onto the house that we live in right now. And we did that with the intention of possibly knowing that we would sell the house and gain the equity off of it, but also also with the intention of one day, my dad, who is still alive, who lives here in Southern California, him coming to live with us when he decided to. Now, the concept of that has changed significantly because He has been incredibly combative at just the thought of ever having to leave his house. And because of his mindset, because of everything that has taken place since my mom passed away, it really would not make sense for me to transplant him, to remove him from his comfortable environment, the house that he built when I was six months old, the house that holds all the memories between he and my mother and our entire family, even if the time comes to where he is too old or too unhealthy to live there on his own. It would make more sense for me to bring in some help. And so I've already come to that conclusion with regards to that. So this thought process of, well, I need to stay here because my dad's going to be living in my house one day, that has really gone out the window, which is no longer a consideration for us. Now, because of the extensive work that we've done on our house, because of the time that we purchased our home, 
Clint and I would be able to sell this property as it sits right now and take that equity and we could buy a house anywhere that we would want to live and just pay cash for it and not have a mortgage payment, which is definitely a good thing for us because we know that anywhere outside of California that we move, the cost of living will be less, sure, but so will the income. So that's definitely a consideration, right? And in researching Texas, I've learned that although they don't have state tax, they do have higher property taxes. And then certainly we have things like the weather, right? There is absolutely no comparison to the weather here in California, really anywhere else in the United States. So that's definitely a big consideration because things like humidity, I don't know how well I'll be able to handle that. And so we we came to this point to where we decided that we're actually going to, we have one final inspection we need done on this house. We'll get the final inspection done. We'll have an appraiser come here to give us an appraisal on the house. We'll see what the actual numbers look like. And I think that we're going in the spring to be able to just travel around Texas, see what areas we like. We have a lot of friends, people that we know that live in Texas. So get some real information, actual information from people who live there and know the areas. I had somebody share with me that Houston, for example, is a very high crime rate area and it's not somewhere that we would want to live and certainly not somewhere that Clint would want to transfer his police career. So it's those types of things that we need to gather more of the facts. We need more information in order to make a solid decision. But a lot of it also comes down to how we actually feel about things, right? Because this anticipation of probably moving to Texas is not something that we understand in the true nature of how it would feel to do that. And the only way to do that is to physically go there and to see how things feel. And we decided that if we do buy a house in Texas, we want to find something that's in a community, like a a gated community, let's say, because Clint and I have never had that sense of community in a neighborhood. And I'm talking about the kind that has its own gym. So we wouldn't, I have an entire gym downstairs. I wouldn't have to worry about moving the entire gym to a new house. And maybe the new house wouldn't have the same space that we have here. It probably most certainly wouldn't have the same space that we have here. But having a community that has, you know, maybe block parties and a community center and people trick or treating, you know, those are things that he and I enjoy and we like that sense of. However, we've never gotten to experience that. And we've definitely never had that as a married couple. So those are the types of considerations that we're at right now. And we also talked about maybe not making a dramatic decision right away. If we did decide to sell the house, it would either be relevantly soon when the market is as high as it is now, or we would wait until the next peak. And if we did decide to sell relatively soon, then we would probably get those pods. And I already looked into it, those giant pods that are like those shipping containers You can get those for about three grand each for the largest ones. And maybe we would need two or three of those. I'm not really sure. And perhaps we would store them for maybe six months or so and stay with my dad at the time. And that would give us a a transition buffer, right? I couldn't imagine the people that decide to make a decision like this and they don't allow themselves some kind of buffer like that. But in my mind, having this six month buffer to where we can stay somewhere. And even if it meant renting an apartment, let's say, which we wouldn't have to do, but if that were the case for you as, as you're listening to this, then you know I think it's important to allow yourself some time to where you don't feel the additional pressure. And by planning for something like that, it would give us time to not only transition, but to fully look for a house that we were comfortable with, look for a, a lateral transfer for Clint, whether it was at a police department or a federal agency, and also to spend some more time with my dad, right? Some really close time being able to stay with him, I think is something that we would both benefit from. And um, that's kind of where we're at right now. And I'm hoping that by sharing this with you, if you're forced or faced with having to make a big life decision like we are right now, that you allow yourself to really take your time and to spell out what all of the pros and the cons are, right? Things like earthquakes versus tornadoes. There are so many micro elements that go into making a big decision like this that we don't always allow ourselves to consider. And having a good sit down and even writing out the pros and cons, it sounds so nuanced and it it almost sounds superficial and, and very simple. And I get that. But having something on paper like that where you're able to physically see and if one list is not even comparative to the other list in terms of the the negative versus the positive, that might also be a, a consideration, not necessarily meaning that the list that's the longest is the winner or the loser, 
But having strategies like that to where you really spell out what all of the facts are, what all of the knowledge is, and then also sitting down and writing out a list of the things that are unknowns, right? Like how would the climate feel in every area of Texas, right? I'm sure that there's a different way of how each area would feel just as it is here. And, you know, what is the tornado risk in the different regions? And maybe going on several ride-alongs with different police agencies for Clint so he can get some really personal information on how things actually are at, at each department. You know, so those are the types of things that I think we don't always allow ourselves the time and space for. But if we have plan ahead of time, if we're afforded the opportunity of being able to plan in advance for this type of thing, then it gives us more of an opportunity to delve into more of the unknowns, to answer more of those questions, which I think is super, super important, no matter what decision we're faced with. So I hope that you've gotten some benefit out of this episode. If you have, please do me a favor, subscribe down below, drop a review, and know that I am sending you a long, tight hug from my home to yours.